So hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Nick Sangui, and I lead alliances at Caspio. And I'm here to talk to you about how to attract partners to your program. Uh, so a little bit about Caspio. Uh, we pioneered the low-code, no-code space over 20 years back. And today, we have over 15,000 customers in 150 countries worldwide. And uh, we've done this on a very scrappy budget. We've been bootstrapped all along. Um, and more importantly, for the purposes of this talk, we started our partner program less than two years back. Um, and within this time, we have signed up more than 250 partners across 50 countries worldwide. And so I'm here to talk to you a little bit about what went into that process and maybe how you can kind of replicate it and uh, repeat it at your own organization. Um, so just like uh, marketing has an ICP or an ideal customer profile for sales leads, what I think is very important for us in the partner world is to start with an ideal partner profile, right? And uh, so here are some elements of the ideal partner profile that we use at Caspio. But uh, basically, what you want to think about is uh, you, know, you want to start with like an ideal wish list of what you're looking for in a partner. And uh, so when we started our partner program, uh, in our wish list, we had some of the topmost, largest uh, GSIs or global system integrators, such as the Tatas and the Deloittes of the world. But what we soon realized was that their idea of uh, what they were looking for in a partner did not really align with what we wanted in our partners. And uh, so it's very important to keep on iterating and refining this based on what you're finding uh, you know, in your interactions with potential partners. Here, to give you just a couple of examples of what actually uh, you know, is working for us right now, you know, so we have one bucket called what's you know, a good partner, what, does, what do they look like? So in, within that category, we have partners that understand the power of low code, no code, uh, because we are a low code platform, obviously. So they, if, it, if they already understand this space, it makes it easier to get the conversation started. Right. Uh, we also wanted partners that ha wanted a bi-directional flow of leads instead of just relying on leads for, uh, from us. So those were something in the good bucket. So in the, in the second or the middle uh, category here is, you know, what are the best partners for us? What do they look like? So within that, we have something that, you know, someone who's specialized in the verticals that we are also catering to, for example, healthcare, education, government, et cetera. Those would be great partners for us to tie, with, tie up with. Or it could be partners that are focused in geographies that we are interested in expanding into, or we don't have a great, uh, strong, direct sales presence in. For example, Japan, Australia, et cetera. Right? And also equally important is that kind of last bucket is who, who's not a potential good partner for you who do you not want to you know, waste time on, et cetera, as well. Within that, uh, it could be examples like you know, if they're diverting the leads that you send to them to your competitors, obviously that's not a good partner. Or if they're a consulting partner or services partner that is not doing a great job on the projects that uh, you're sending to them, that's also a red flag as well. That's a little bit about the ideal partner profile. And now once you've started kind of getting to a draft ideal partner profile and you know what you're you know, looking for in an ideal partner, the next step comes, to, comes down to where to look for these potential partners, right? And here are just some ideas or high level ideas of, or categories of where to look for these partners and uh, along with some examples, right? So the first thing is competitor partners. And like I said, uh, someone who already understands your space, their half your selling is already done. Uh, you know, so for example, in our space, if they already are, are working with a low code, no code competitor of ours, at least we don't have to evangelize or educate them about our space. All we need to do is that, hey, you're already working with Power Apps, 
or you're already working with out systems, here's what Caspio can do for you differently, right? So that's uh, the first category. And this is also very easy to locate based on the partner directories that your competitors will obviously be hosting on their websites. The second category, again, I alluded to this previously, which is the target geographies. And a lot of us here are US-based or have the US or Europe as the major markets. And uh, partners are a great way to diversify geographically. And so for us, for example, Japan, Australia, Middle East, Southeast Asia, these were typical target geos where we wanted to expand our partner footprint and expand our sales there. Uh, I also mentioned target verticals. This is somewhere where you're uh, looking for kind of an overlap so that you know, so we uh, cater to the healthcare, government, education, nonprofits, et cetera. And if there are solutions partners that are already working in this space, it makes them more valuable to us, right? Another thing is adjacent technologies. So we often, uh, you know, a lot of our customers are migrating from like Google Sheets or uh, Microsoft technologies like Excel, Access, et cetera, over to when they want something more systematic or robust, then they are trying to look for uh, platforms like ours. So that would be an adjacent technology. AWS is another one, uh, another example, et cetera. Right, and then uh, bundled offerings, right? And so these are uh, potential partners that your customers typically have to procure alongside your product. And uh, so, uh, for example, in our case, it could be website builders like Wix or hosting providers like GoDaddy, et cetera. Now, if there are partners that are working with those uh, solutions or products, then it kind of makes it easier for them to work with you and offer a bundled offering to their customers. Right? Uh, another category is uh, horizontals or kind of practice areas. Uh, within that, for example, we've, uh, you know, so we look at our partner footprint. We saw there were a few management consulting firms and business consulting firms that also have a technology advisory practice nowadays. And so uh, it was you know, looking for more examples of that. Or accounting firms as well nowadays increasingly recommend uh, technology solutions. And as uh, one of our previous speakers mentioned, they're also more trusted as well uh, by the CFO organization or within procurement, et cetera. So accounting firms could be another, VARS is another category of uh, solution providers as well. And then of course, mine partner leads from your CRM. There could be a lot of these partners that are informally kind of already working with your customers on behalf of your customers, et cetera. Sometimes it's even possible to identify them with a different domain name uh, as opposed to the customers or uh, you know, uh, uh, domain name. So, you can mine them from your CRM, from your support and ticketing systems, et cetera. Uh, and uh, I think last but not the least, uh, events like these, uh, you know, great venues for networking, meeting up with potential partners, Slack channels. Uh, I've derived a great value from the CSA Connect uh, or CSA's uh, you know, Slack channel, a lot of networking that can happen through that, and just other online forums as well. So, once you have kind of a list of target accounts or target partners to go after, um, you know, the next steps are to kind of research them on LinkedIn. LinkedIn also has various tools where it surfaces with, you know, AI and other similar potential looking partners. They have this recent feature called personas where you can say, hey, I want to look at anyone that's VP or above at my target account or anyone that's working in partnerships at my target accounts, et cetera, and get lists of those sorts of target prospects. Then you can reach out to them, of course, over LinkedIn using Sales Navigator or Connect Invites, but also there are tools like Zoom Info and Seamless, which I've shown here, which we use uh, ourselves at Caspio, that help in kind of extracting. You just press one button, and it goes through all the search results pulls out all contact information, such as email addresses, phone numbers, et cetera, and populates that into uh, the sales automation tool of your choice. 
uh, which in our case, we use HubSpot sales sequences, but it could be outreach or any other tool, um, right? And so this allows you to do personalization and scale where you're sending, uh, so for example, we might have an accounting a sequence for accounting firms, right? Which is, uh, brings out case studies, accounting case studies, et cetera, and uh, it's hyper-personalized to that particular category. And so they, and it has automated follow-ups that keep following up every a few days few or few weeks uh, with value add. And uh, so we derived most of our uh, signups through this process that I described just now. Of course, uh, another uh, important category of tools in, within the partnership space is these ecosystem tools. And I think, uh, I think they're going to be presenting either today or tomorrow, uh, Crossbeam and Reveal being the two biggest ones. Uh, and, uh, and they have free plans. We've just been using their free plans, but we have struck a solid partnership gold through these uh, platforms where you share your customers, other partners share their customers, and it's all kind of hidden. It's like a custodial of that information, and all you, know, you can choose how much you want to share. You, you might want to just share overlap counts, et cetera. We've been able to partner with major organizations like OneEdge and others through these tools as well. Great. So once you've started moving these partner prospects through your funnel, um, and, and we basically treat it very much like a sales organization would treat their sales funnel, right? So the next steps typically tend to be a meeting. Um, you're with them, uh, Zoom meetings, uh, presentations, et cetera. And towards that, having a solid collateral in terms of presentations and landing pages is going to be very valuable. Um, another thing to keep in mind is also if you are more on the volume side, where you want to sign a lot of partners every month or so, try to move away from uh, you know, those DocuSign type legal agreements and try to move more towards a form type approach where you can, they can simply check a checkbox saying that, yes, I agree to the, uh, I mean, that simple tweak, again, sounds so simple, but improves your conversion rate significantly as well. Um, social proof also, by the way, uh, very important. Again, when you're starting off, you may not have as many formal partners, but there might be these informal partners who are already working on behalf of your customers on your platform or product. Uh, and it's great if you can get uh, video case studies um, and testimonials from them and add them to your partner landing pages. And of course, one, the next part of the funnel uh, uh, is, of course, once they sign up to become a partner, try to make it as easy for them to become successful on your product or platform as possible. Right? So having a strong partner portal with all the material that they need to be successful, co-marketing, co-selling material, as well as product, uh, price sheets, technical information, et cetera. All of that's going to be very valuable as well. And as much of it as possible in a self-service model in a partner portal where they can uh, go in and consume whatever information they need would be great as well. Right. Um, another aspect of it, again, uh, is the training. Um, try to offer free uh, online and recorded sessions in terms of trading on your platform. Um, and if it can be specifically tailored towards partners who are going to be requiring even more of the technical training than, say, end customers might, that's going to be even more valuable. So almost think of them as an extension of your team, it's just like you would train your teams, uh, offer uh, that level of training to them. and. The next step to, uh, you know, to, or kind of the other side of the coin is certifications. And uh, certifications are very important for partners to showcase that, hey, yes, I am an expert on this product or platform. And for your customers to be able to trust them that if, they, you know, if this uh, firm has, say, five certified developers, then they must, be knowing, uh, they must know what they're doing, et cetera. So, uh, you know, free certifications for your partners, that's another important element. And uh, then to tie it all together and 
uh, you know, make uh, your partners more visible to your end customers, having a great, easy to use partner directory that's featured ideally on your top nav bar or on your home page very prominently is also super important. This is also something that your potential partner prospects are going to check. Whether they tell you or not, they're going to check, hey, do, you know, do these guys, uh, if I sign up as a partner, am I going to get business from them? Are they going to showcase me prominently in front of their customers or not? So having this partner directory is super important from that perspective, but also for your customers to also find who's the best partner in my country or who speaks my language or in my industry vertical, et cetera, becomes very important. And then having rich partner profile pages with introduction videos, webinar recordings, customer reviews, all of that also goes a long way. Another, uh, and I know uh, marketplaces have been spoken about quite a bit today, and, and I, I completely agree with the other speakers that marketplaces are becoming very vital for the, eco, uh, for the whole ecosystem. Uh, so if you can, even having a homegrown marketplace, even with, you know, we have like, what, 30 applications, and we had, we've had to seed many of those applications ourselves. But to have this marketplace is a great value add for the entire ecosystem. Your customers can benefit from, you know, getting ideas and inspiration and uh, getting it much cheaper and faster than having to build it one off. Your partners can obviously benefit from commercializing their offerings in a more productized manner as opposed to selling it in a services-based model. And so we have a marketplace that lists apps, extensions, data, et cetera, as well. Um, Co-marketing, again, uh, you know, many of your partners are, uh, will not have the same marketing budget or you know, presence as you might as a SaaS product or a SaaS vendor might. And so what we've found is of immense value to the entire, again, to the entire ecosystem is co-marketing, webinars, podcasts, et cetera, um, gives, again, ideas and inspirations to your custom, uh, customers and prospects. Uh, also gives a great way to showcase partners to showcase their unique proposition, unique value propositions as well. And uh, these have the added value of being able to be converted into long form blog posts or uh, snackable bite-sized video clips, uh, et cetera. Um, and so this has been greatly valuable as well. Um, and the value in this lies not just in those who actually make it to your event, online event or whatever, it's also in all the social media mileage that you get prior to the event as well as post event saying, you know, hey, we had this great session, here were the key takeaways and insights, et cetera. And uh, yeah, that kind of uh, brings me uh, to the conclusion of the talk, which is, uh, and I want to share that today, uh, you know, what we what started at Caspio with a bit of skepticism, hey, you know, just a couple of years back, is this thing going to work out or not, etc., uh, is now being completely embraced. Uh, the entire company sees the value and the ROI that partnerships can bring to us, and today we have partners that are true extension of our sales team. We've started sharing leads where, you know, in, in some of these geographies here, shown here in green, uh, where those leads get directly contacted by partners first, saying that, hey, hi, saw you reached out to us at Caspio, I'm calling on behalf of Caspio, how can I help you today? And so they're becoming an integral and vital part of Caspio. And uh, yeah, that's about it. I uh, hope uh, you got some good takeaways from this. And uh, would love for you guys to check us out at uh, www.caspio.com and uh, connect me with, with me on LinkedIn. Uh, and I'll open it up for any questions if there are any. Yeah, so just to repeat the question, um, one is how we nurture our partners to kind of bring, keep bringing in leads. Uh, right, so um, again, you know, we've set kind of the expectations up front with them that this is going to be a two-way partnership where we expect both sides to kind of bring leads to each other. But uh, also, you know, we help them uh, 
One is we have regular partner office hours. You know, every two weeks we meet with our partners. We're kind of strategizing all the time, like, hey, what can we do in terms of market development, business development, et cetera. Uh, we are, like I said, we've run several webinars with our partners to kind of give them, get them in front of our customers. And at the same time, obviously, you know, that helps in showcasing Caspio to their customer base as well. Um, and so, you know, one thing is just to kind of invite ideas from partners and then take them into action as well is, uh, you know, they, a lot of them have a lot of ideas, in, but there's often these partner organizations that need to have an open ear and, and try these things out and see where it leads. So, so that was the first part of your question. And sorry, was there, uh, did, was there? One of the things is uh, that we kind of, you know, encourage, one is we constantly keep the lines of communication open with, you know, newsletters, with, uh, with these office hours, et cetera. And what we're constantly reminding them is about deal registration. We're also mentioning about, uh, you know, the more, the more you contribute, the more engaged you are, the more you will get back in return from us. And so we uh, constantly keep those types of engagement scores as well on what partners are being engaged with us, who, who's sending us more. Either it could be leads, but it could also be just, you know, helping us close more deals as well. You know, it's the win rate also matters at the end of the day. And uh, so there are partners who have helped us more than double our win rate. And that itself is a great victory for our sales team as well. And so we then reciprocate back to them in terms of sending them more leads, et cetera. A related question to that, uh, Nikuj. First, first of all, thanks for the presentation. Sure. Um, what's the biggest uh, friction point do you see between your direct sellers and you know the partner channel? I know this is uh, not an easy question to answer, but, uh, no, but every company they, deals with this. Uh, what, are, what are your top? pain points? Uh, it's, it's a very important topic, definitely, for sure. I mean, the uh, direct sales can sometimes feel that, hey, this is like a competition for us. You know, these guys are going to steal away our commissions, etc. So having those conversations consistently with both their leadership, both the sales leadership and the customer success leadership, and articulating the value that partners are consistently bringing to the table is very important. Also, uh, uh, my team and I, we show up on you know the sales team meetings. We're constantly showcasing uh, the value of, uh, hey, look, in this particular deal, partners, uh, this partner helped close this deal, et cetera. And having a rules of engagement as well, established rules of engagement saying, hey, with all as many rules as possible clearly articulated and written out saying that if the partner helps, then this is how it's going to get split, et cetera, uh, is also going to be crucial. But uh, yeah, you're very right. I mean, uh, those are some of the things that you need to take to make sure to avoid conflict between the teams or reduce conflict. There is definitely going to be always channel conflict. So. You mentioned you do engagement score of your partners. That's interesting. Uh, can you tell us, like, tell me a little bit more about that? Like, how does it work? What, what are the inputs you look for? What's like the scale and so forth? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, so again, like I said, we're, we're pretty scrappy here. So, you know, what we do is we maintain, uh, it's right now in a big Google sheet where we have all of our signed partners and we have various metrics that we track in terms of one is how responsive they are, right? And, and again, like in one of the talks earlier today, they said it's going to be about 20% of your partners are going to be the really active ones. The 80% are going to be so-called quote unquote long tail, which they might you know, come to you once in a year, maybe, if they have an opportunity, et cetera. But, so what we are tracking is who's staying engaged with us, in, in, you know, who's responding to our emails, who's, uh, we have regular check-ins, who's, who's participating in those check-ins, and various other metrics, like obviously you know, how many leads they're sending us, that's getting tracked through deal registration in our uh, partner portal itself but also how many deals they're influencing. So partner influence revenue as well is, is important for us. So those are the various metrics that we are tracking. Besides them, you know, just the other uh, hard numbers such as number of certified developers, 
all of those. And some of these metrics, as you know, in the first year of our partner program, we were even, uh, these were like targets from a bonus or a comp plan perspective as well for the enablement team, which is number of certifications. For the partner recruitment side, it's just number of uh, partner meetings that we are having, uh, qualified partner meetings that we are having, as well as number of partner signups. So um, you know, that kind of helped in getting that mindset entrenched within our team and kept it rolling. There's one question here. Uh, you, you mentioned that it, may, it applies to uh, solution and consulting partners. Can you tell us if it also applies to technology partners or ISVs? Yeah, uh, I, I think this, uh, for us as a no-code platform, our solutions or consulting partners were the most important ones. But this can equally apply on the technology side as well. And in fact, we've done versions of this for you know, targeting uh, website builders like Wix, et cetera. We went after hosting providers like GoDaddy and that entire, there's, you know, so, so yeah, this can equally apply on the technology side as well. Um, especially if you have a product slash engineering team that's able to support those technology integrations that many of them will require to be successful. Thanks a lot, everyone, for your time today. Yeah. Right, thank you.